Today, Japan is a very strong economy. It's respected as a nation. The behavior of people are respected for their punctuality, politeness, uh, cleanliness, orderliness, and all that. And goods of today are, are very well recognized as high quality goods. In fact, today other countries are screaming for protection against Japanese goods because they cannot match, they cannot be competitive against Japanese goods. So Japan is a very productive country, highly custom oriented and one thread that lies right throughout is the respect for individual. Now, uh, if you take the techniques one by one, the first observation I made in my first trip to Japan in 1980 is that the other person is more important. Japanese people always treat the other person as more important than you. And if you, I remember in 1980 when we went out for a meal uh, with some Japanese people, what I noticed first of all was nobody pours any water or drinks to themselves first. You always pour to the other person on your right or your left, but never to, never to yourself. Whether even dishing out food, never to yourself. So always treat the other person first. And this culture is there right throughout. Other person is so important. You should never block an entrance which will inconvenience people. You go to board a train, uh, if you compare Sri Lanka and Japan, before you, before you, pe before people exit and get down from the train, you try to enter and there is a block. But in Japan, you have to wait on the two sides and allow the people to alight and then you get in. If it's a lift, it's the same thing. Always allow the other person first. So inconveniencing someone is never done. So that is what uh, translates into you never cheat a customer by giving him poor quality because it will inconvenience him. You will never find Japanese people talking on the phone in public places or loud in uh, talking loud in public places. And even when they are wearing masks, you know, mask wearing uh, was in Japan many, many years ago. And uh, that in winter time, you get the colds and flu and so on. So you wear the mask more to prevent you giving your cold to somebody else rather than to prevent you getting some infection from somebody. So the whole principle is other person is more important and therefore you will not uh, un uh, inconvenience the other person. So if you take uh, the next one which you observe is punctuality. Being late is considered very bad manners. So if you are late for an appointment in Japan, the host will think, well, I, that person doesn't care for me. That's why he, uh, I'm uh, kept waiting. It's not good to be too early either. And end time also must be respected. So that's why when I was heavily involved with uh, Justica and so on, and I used to get invited for uh, um, functions at the Japanese ambassador's house, you don't get go late, which means you go and park your car near St. Bridges Convent and wait till the time comes and then you enter. And if the invitation says 7.30 to 9, then 9 o'clock, before 9 o'clock, you must quit the place. It's uh, disrespectful to go on, hang around and drink and something like that uh, over the time limit. If you go to Japan, many SME CEOs, they do a lot of work on their own. If you have an appointment at 9 o'clock and if you go at 8.30, you will find that the CEO himself is cleaning and mopping the uh, floor outside and the lobby and so on. So it will, it will be a little embarrassing. So you don't never go too early. Even after a crisis, people are punctual. When we first went to Japan, we had uh, uh, the next day, we arrived one day and the next day was uh, the course, the course was starting at nine o'clock in the morning. We uh, felt some tremors and some uh, things shaking, 
but we didn't know it was an earthquake somewhere far away from Tokyo. Next morning in the papers we see twisted metal, broken roads and all that pictures in the papers and uh, the organizers came and distributed another program and said we are still starting at 9 o'clock but we are starting with lectures at 9 o'clock because the opening ceremony is postponed for the afternoon because people from Nagoya cannot come early morning they had to find alternative routes and but even with an earthquake they started on time whereas that the team from the same group came for a seminar here in Sri Lanka I was also amongst one of the organizers and uh, in a five-star hotel seminar was supposed to start at nine o'clock even at 9 30 only 50 percent of the participants had come and the Japanese were getting very upset and they asked why why uh, haven't people come so we had to say it's raining outside now here even for after an earthquake they came on time but here because of a rain they don't come on time so uh, sometimes one problem if at all is that they are very inflexible you try to go check into a hotel if it says 2 p.m. is check-in time even at 159 you will not be checked in in the case of emails promptness and punctuality goes together you have to immediately reply saying you have received acknowledge it even though you might send the answer later the uh, exchanging of cards is something that you do when you first meet a per person and it is bad manners to say well I don't have cards or I have forgotten my cards or something I have exhausted my stock of cards or something like that and there is a procedure you have to always hold your card with both hands and turn it in the proper direction so that the other person can read it and offer it to the other person and he will do the same thing and you have to accept it with both hands other thing is that if you are a junior person you offer the your business card at a lower height and if you are a senior person you offer at a higher height than the person you are offering it to so there is always a little bit of procedure for everything so uh, can we uh, replicate this punctuality in our country yes you can I have been in many organizations and I have insisted when they say you know this is Sri Lanka and so on no I insist that is punctuality in one organization I had to even lock the meeting room exactly on time and anybody who came late were locked out after that everybody came on time so we can actually replicate these cleanliness is uh, another uh, aspect and why are they so interested in cleanliness because it is to make it clean for the other person Kirezuki is a term uh, which means an obsession with uh, cleanliness they are really keen on cleanliness cleanliness in public places even in a hotel if you go and sometimes there are these uh, drinks dispensers you take a can of coca-cola and sit and drink with some of your friends or something like that and because the ice you get that water on that uh, glass top of the table you're supposed to wipe it with tissue before you leave the place so that the next person who comes there finds it immaculately clean janitorial services are not favored by the Japanese people because what they say is by getting a janitorial service you are you are even reinforcing the idea that you have the right to dirty the place mess up the place and get somebody else to clean so they say no everybody is a janitor I remember even at Dangkoto porcelain where we had the, uh, the Japanese were the bigger owners and uh, they were trying to improve the cleanliness and uh, sometimes some people just litter the thing or they were supposed to pick up anything they see and put it in the garbage bin and they say you should start it I'm the chairman but they said you should start that habit then everybody else will follow it even in schools the children clean their own school garbage earlier there were garbage bins in many places today there are no garbage bins in most places because you're not supposed to put your garbage on the on a street litter bin you have if you have garbage you take it home and put it in your uh, bin at home 
I went to Nico once. It's a touristic place, and I had something for lunch, and I was trying to dispose of this bag, but there wasn't a single garbage bin anywhere. Finally, when I went to the bus, uh, bus which takes you to the train station, there is a queue, and everyone in the queue had a bag because uh, you have to carry your own bag and go back to Tokyo and go back home. So that's uh, uh, the the concept. So you can see how clean the streets are. Not a scrap of paper, not a cigarette butt. How clean uh, Japanese streets and public places are. Discipline is uh, another major aspect. They are generally a conformist society, and uh, they follow the rule. And if it's a pedestrian crossing, and you see it's uh, red for you, but you don't see a car in sight, but you will not cross. There are special lanes uh, uh, when you go out of the city for emergencies like your ambulances, fire engines to go. And once we were stuck in a in a stuck in a place uh, in our, on a in a major traffic jam for hours, but not a single car went onto that special lane. Whereas on the highway, on the southern highway, there was an accident. I was behind. And it had just happened, and within seconds, lots of other cars came closer and closer to see. Then even on the grass and everywhere, and then we could hear this wail of a uh, of a ambulance, the siren of an ambulance. There was no chance for the ambulance to get anywhere close. So finally, the police had to arrive and get cars shifted here and there for the ambulance. So that's the discipline that we have compared to what Japan has. And uh, discipline is helped by marks and signs. So there are sign boards uh, and marks and all that uh, everywhere. And even the cool biz policy. There's a new new one where you have to set all your air conditions to 26 degrees. Most people follow that. It's not mandatory, but they follow that. And uh, even I found it's a little warm, 26 degrees, but. To save energy, that's what they 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 have. I suggested it here, wrote to the papers and so on, but uh, nothing uh, really happened. So I will show you some things, uh, some pictures, just to break the monotony. Now you can see in this staircase there is nobody else except these two gentlemen. They can go anywhere on this staircase, but still, discipline is such that they stick to their their side. So. Uh, Other thing is respect for others, the art of bowing. You know there are different kinds of bows according to the 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 person you are bowing to. So for your colleagues it's a small short bow, and for the other people it is a longer bow. And and uh, according to one Japanese uh, professor, the deepest bow is for the emperor and the customers, just to show how they respect customers. Now, uh, this bowing is uh, done uh, in most places, and uh, if you go even to a restaurant, or the first experience I had was when they, when I got into the bus uh, at uh, Narita Airport, where you get into this airport limousine bus, and there are the people who will come and check your tickets. But before they go out of the bus, after checking your ticket. They will bow to all the passengers and get down. Then the driver comes on aboard, and he will first face all the passengers and bow to all the passengers, and then go to his driving seat. And the baggage handlers have all put the baggage, and they are now ready. Bus takes off. While the bus is taking off, all those baggage handlers will keep on bowing until the bus goes out of sight. So that's the respect they have. Feedback is a uh, is very cautious now. Even in Dangotoro Post Lane, we had our Japanese directors, but I could not get any feedback about how I am performing. They are very, very, very slow at that. Um, very because of their politeness. Uh, but at an informal meeting, they might hint at some of the things that I could do and what I shouldn't do, and so on. Sometimes, uh, because of their politeness and respect. So they will never say no at once, and but you have to learn to understand that sometimes they will not then say yes, yes for some proposal, 
but actually they may know and so you have to know uh, what, what, what exactly they mean. So treatment of customers, they will go out of the way to help the customers and always their focus is what more can I do for my customer. Several times when I had to check out from the hotels in Japan, sometimes early hours of the morning like 5 o'clock and hardly anybody and as I uh, I mean, I phone the reception and say, okay, have my bill ready, I'm coming down now to check out. And as I come and press the uh, lift uh, uh, button, the lift is there on that floor. This has happened to me several times. And I thought how coincidental that the lift is there. And later on only I knew, as soon as I phone the reception and say that I'm coming, they send one chap to the lift to send it to the uh, 16th floor or wherever I am so that I will not be further inconvenienced. So if you go to a department store at the end of the day when the store is closing and everyone has paid up and they are coming down the escalators all of the staff will be lined up and bow to you thank thanking you and the ground floor staff will be outside always bowing and thanking you. At restaurants it's not only one person who greets you, but as you enter, the entire staff will shout irashamase. And when you are going out, everyone will shout arigato gozaimasu, that is uh, thank you, irashamase means welcome. So that's the way they treat customers. Then also nature cannot defeat you. And that's something that is again one of the things that really struck me in my first visit in 1980. It was raining. <clears throat> and uh, I was uh, watching as soon as it starts raining everyone has an umbrella even the ladies have folded, folding uh, umbrellas in their handbag they take them out but the ladies will not only take out their umbrellas they have two polythene tubes because they are wearing stockinette and the rain is very fine rain it blows across and their legs will get wet so they put these uh, polythene tubes uh, the legs through the polythene tubes to prevent them getting the shoes wet and the legs wet because and they will keep on walking they will never go into some uh, porch or some bus salt or some shelter until the rain stops no their, their mentality is the rain is a natural thing I am not surrendering to this I am fully prepared I go so even in landscaping you will see that the trees are not allowed to grow the way they want. You will, when you get close you will see that there are wires that are holding the branches and adjusting it so that it will grow in a nice balanced way. In the earthquakes it's the same thing as I already said. Uh, even if there are earthquakes you are fully prepared. Then uh, summer heat, we always grumble when the when the weather is hot but August in Japan in Tokyo especially is very hot and hotter than here and more uncomfortable but nobody grumbles everyone knows this is, this is hot so everyone has a fan if you are uh, waiting for a bus you are having your fan and fanning yourself in the same way when we buy some piece of equipment we believe that it will start deteriorating but the Japanese belief is we must clean it and oil it and grease it and bring it back into original condition every day. So that's why Japan has the lowest breakdown rates because they are always looking after their machines. And this is coming after World War II because after World War II what the government said was most of our machines, uh, machinery is destroyed. So please look after you, the existing machinery, look after them, don't let it break down. And from that time onwards, they were very, very uh, careful with tender loving care, they would uh, look after machinery. They are uh, data-based uh, decision making, never on hunches, gut feeling, guesses, opinions and so on. Because if at Dangkutu Porcelain, before the Japanese got involved, we when we had a quality problem and uh, there is a, the reject rate is increasing and then at a board meeting this is highlighted 
and the board summons the factory manager and says, explain what's going on. Why is the reject uh, high? And uh, he will say, well, I think uh, it is this reason or I think it is some other reason. He will catch his head and give some things which is really not based on data but on his hunches and gut feelings and so on. After the Japanese got involved, what they say is, if you, and once we had to summon the Japanese uh, technical person to the board and said, explain what is going on, why is the reject rate going high, he has collected a whole lot of data. He had made graphs and charts and all that, and he set it up at the board and explained what exactly is happening. So they use a lot of this root cause analysis based on data, <clears throat> never hunches and so on. And they will analyze the data in various ways. For example, it's not just a percentage of, or, of re rejects or something like that. By the way, even percentage is something they don't use because now mostly say Six Sigma and so on. But um, they will say, okay, let's see whether there's a difference in Monday production and Tuesday production and Thursday production and so on. So by the day of the week, then by the hour of the day, eight to nine, what is the percentage? In nine to 10, what is the percentage? They analyze it in different, different ways and arrive at the root causes. So it's always based on data. Other thing is consensus decision making. They do a lot of consulting involved uh, people, participatory, what they call nemawashi. And uh, they, I remember when we had, uh, before the Japanese uh, got involved in our company, we had uh, decided to set up a new component factory and the plant manager or the fa plant, yeah, plant manager decided where the factory is because he's the plant manager and ordered the machinery and everything. And soon after that, the Japanese arrived. We hadn't even started construction on that factory, but we had just made the decision. And uh, they asked, um, why did you fix this place? So we said, um, well, the factory manager decided that this is the most suitable place. Then they asked the factory manager, did you consult uh, the other people who are going to work here, like the the, the manager and the supervisors who are going to work here. And he said, no, because I'm the factory manager, I decided. They said, no, you have to consult everybody. It might take time. So we suspended everything and started this consultant, uh, consultation process. It was very irritating for the senior people. But <clears throat> after a lot of exchanges, we took about a month and the whole project got delayed. And now the machinery has come and we had to pre prepare a new shed to put, store the machinery until this and building hadn't even started. And uh, finally they decided on where it should be, which was a different place, but only about six feet different to the original place. But the difference was that everybody was committed to that place and it was everybody's choice and not only the plant manager's choice. So that takes time, decision making takes time, but everybody is committed. And subsequently there was long time ago, a long time later, I think something happened and we dispensed with all these ideas and decided on some machine and lots of people were against this decision. They were not consulted because they were not consulted. And they did everything possible to make, make the decision seem to be a wrong decision. And we learned a bit of lesson from that. Also, part of this decision making is their communication. Their communication uh, is also partly what they call communication because lots of these office people after work, they go for a drink. and. Uh, then they come, they discuss various things. The seniors and the juniors are all together. Next morning, they will maintain their hierarchy. But while they are having a drink, it is that. So, of course, I must make it clear that I am not recommending this communication method uh, where you go for a drink and uh, discuss. But this is what happens. I am just informing you about it. 
precision and attention to detail they are very very precise in everything they do whether it's an email that they send every little thing the documentation and <clears throat> even the address system sign boards position marks everything you we understood the precision the first time i went to japan in 1980 because <clears throat> all the documentation was sent to me they said when you arrive at narita airport this is what you will do you will get into uh, the you will see outside airport limousine bus board and you go and buy the ticket to the tokyo city air terminal and this is the cost of the ticket and they may buy the ticket and the ticket will indicate which bus stop you have to go to that bus ride will take you approximately so many minutes of course depending on traffic when you get there here's a map of the tokyo city air terminal and you go to this exit and take the taxi and and attached here with is a map of your hotel in japanese you just give this to the taxi driver and he will take you direct to the hotel and when you go to the when when we went to the hotel like that or not we i went to the hotel and everything was ready the booking was made there was a document for you to uh, go through everything was perfect whereas when i was going to the england uh, to england for the first time no information so we had to find out and they said okay tell him to come to victoria train station <coughs> and wait near such and such board so we waited there and then we were taken in a bus uh, to the british council given our foreign exchange and uh, the travelers checks this was a long time ago in 1982 and uh, then they he said now go to slau and i i got a shock i said how do i go to slau he said you take the train how do i take the train um then that person says well frankly i don't know uh, maybe you could check with the doorman downstairs so i go and ask the doorman and it's a long story but to cut the story short uh, it was a discovery by itself how to get to paddington station to go to slough and when you go to slough uh, they had booked the hotel two days later and that was also a mess so you can see the precision with which the japanese people do things and uh, i will i will show you some uh, pictures now when you get down from a station all the details are there where you want to go and which exit you will take from the uh, metro and uh, then uh, even you are going if you are going by train which direction the train will go is marked and uh, if you are climbing stairs the up and down arrows are marked so that you go up this way and down this way and see how well the cars are parked in this exactly in the center of that box nothing is crooked so perfectly aligned but this is how we park in our country in the middle of the thing so that where two cars park cars can be parked only one car can park even here there are foot marks to show you where to stand then we come to alignment <coughs> mentality where uh, like examples are like pasting stamps they are if you get a letter from japan you will notice that the stamps are pasted perfectly in a corner aligned on both sides notice boards all aligned if you see pictures hanging on a wall in japan paintings hanging they are all straight because anything crooked is considered to be bad it's a bad woman it's not good in fact once <coughs> in our in our office we had the name boards uh, pasted on the on, for each person's uh, cubicle and uh, one person had in one person's room that board was crooked it was going down and somehow the japanese didn't like that manager and he came and told me this is obvious from this man's name board his performance de de continuing to decline because it's crooked so 
everything is aligned whether you park uh, your car it's aligned whether you uh, um, even keeping your shoes uh, when you, because in many homes you are not supposed to go in, inside with shoes you take them out but you just don't take them out and uh, kick them aside uh, which I did first time I, I didn't know I was asked to remove my shoes I removed the shoes and kicked them aside and went in and then they called me and said Mr. Vijay Singh there is a, a certain uh, custom here you have to uh, keep it in, in a row and then only I felt so ashamed because all the others had kept them nicely aligned <coughs> and not only that you had to keep the shoes turned outwards uh, for two reasons they say one is easier when you are going out just to slip into your shoes and go other thing is it's not polite to have shoes pointing in to inside the house so vertical and horizontal placements even in some company they teach people even what they keep on their table must be either uh, this way or this way perfectly aligned not just crooked all over the place uh, then we have orderly and open office open office is uh, with uh, work islands now when i go to japan to uh, my regular meetings with the japanese uh, our japanese office there uh, <coughs> the directors even don't have cubicles they are separate all the directors are in a row but they are overseeing a work island where their staff all a work island all the tables are together of course now with the covid situation i don't know whether they can maintain that i don't know what the their answer is but uh, it's an open office so even in dankote porcelain they said i had a room of my own they said no it's better um, if you share it with some people and i agreed to share it so ultimately the japanese director and the uh, uh, the chief operating officer and myself three of us were sharing that room and it helped because what i talk others can hear so i don't have to brief them separately on, on that and that is a uh, wonderful thing and uh, uh, and the officers are also very efficient very well organized so you get all the photocopying machines separately all the filing cabinets separately and all sort of sh uh, shared common services you can you can see even the way they organize their drawers e everything is so well or uh, uh, nicely and orderly respect for elders is very good there uh, even in the workplaces in the universities which we visited it's all high respect and they will never let uh, even an older person walk by they will never cross his path so even when we visited because our program my first program was conduct organized by KU University we have visited the university <coughs> and so when a professor is walking the students will respectfully uh, bow and wait for the professor to go so that a uh, huge amount of respect for older people even the CEOs and so on are usually over 60 and uh, building relationships long-term relationships with suppliers now our our method is here in sri lanka we always co call for competitive quotations and select a person so after one year or two years we'll again go for another round of uh, quotations and select another supplier who is even cheaper but the japanese don't like that they said that's not not a nice thing to do because it's better if you select a uh, uh, supplier to and have a long-term relationship so you select not only on price but on many other things on his capability for developing uh, the product and so on and then once you select the uh, supplier uh, <clears throat> you have to help him improve his quality improve his productivity so that even the cost can be reduced so ultimately you will benefit so even his delivery, so PQC DSM really in that his uh, typical Japanese uh, uh, term, productivity, quality, cost, delivery, safety, and morale will improve. Uh, then um, deep observation is something that they always do. We, we are 
generally not not superficial at all and this was <coughs> highlighted by Pro, uh, Dr. Ono who was a director of uh, Tokyo uh, sorry Toyota the uh, director of Toyota who uh, started this by the new recruits uh, like supervisors and uh, so on he would draw take them to the factory draw a chalk circle and say you stand here and observe for one hour what's going to happen what's happening and after one hour he will call him and say what did you see uh, how many cars passed during this one hour and this young person did know what to observe so he might say i don't know uh, i didn't count uh, and how many workers are there um, i didn't i didn't count how many windows are there or and all manner of questions like that and that way they are taught to observe 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 very carefully the exact thing what is happening and that i saw in practice because one day in our factory at dankotur we find find we have asked people to wash their hands because uh, there are iron particles that come even surfaces may have iron particles from the roof and so on and these iron particles if you touch a plate before firing although you can't see it to your naked eye when you fire it it becomes a black spot so and it's a reject so we had asked everyone every worker wash your hands with soap and now we think they are washing their hands with soap and problem is over like even for covid we say wash the hands with soap and nicely rub everything 20 seconds everything i haven't seen anybody washing for 20 seconds but anyway uh, the, the that's the way when we assume okay people are washing their hands but still this problem is there although it was reduced this iron spot problem was there what did the japanese uh, person do he went inside the toilet so only the male toilet and now he is watching to see how people are washing their hands and he said he came out and told me so this is what is happening and that's why you are still having iron particles because the workers will have some dirt in their hands they can open the tap wash the hands now they have been told put soap no so they put soap wash the hands close the tap what happens all the dirt first came onto the tap no now even if they wash the hand when they are closing the tap all that dirt comes back onto the hand right so then they came and asked me um, you know uh, in japan we teach children in schools how to wash their hands uh, why are you not teaching your children i said well some of our schools in the rural area they may not even have a tap uh, so but that is <clears throat> that is what you call deep observation even a janitorial service one day our japanese uh, director he has followed the japanese the uh, followed the janitorial service for one hour and then he comes and tells me they are not cleaning they take one piece of cloth and spread the dirt all over because they will wipe the cupboard they will wipe the table they will wipe the window sill with this one piece of cloth so that's why they observe observe everything that is happening and that is some habit that we can easily develop i have seen the daily ritual exercises especially in construction sites you can see it because it's open they have all their exercises for fitness and so on but what really impressed me was their exercises to uh, with one another like they get into a row and massage the shoulders of the person in front and i asked them what is the meaning they said not only to massage the shoulders and to give a massage but also to show you are dependent on me and the one who is massaging your shoulder then they everybody turns around and now this person is massaging shoulders of the other person so interdependence right so these are also good uh, things uh, attitude to your employees paternalistic but democratic Japanese people believe that their workers have a lot of potential they can use the brain and that's why i said the american methods didn't work because the the workers complained that americans have american methods have a very uh, very uh, detailed manual and they are told this is exactly how you do this japanese people don't like that they want to use their brain to improve the process if possible so the workers at that time said 
Well, under the American management system, you have to keep your lunch packet in the locker. Not only the lunch packet, you are supposed to keep your brains also in the locker and then walk into the factory because in the factory you are not allowed to use your brain. So, Japanese changed this and they got a people to use their brains, improve everything what they see. Then, uh, also, one of our lecturers asked, why is the Shinkansen, which is their Japan's bullet train, why does it go faster than the normal train? Answer is, in a normal train, the train, whole train is pulled by a powerful engine in front. But in the Shinkansen, every carriage has power. Every carriage has power. So it is an empowered train. So that's why it can go much faster than being pulled by a powerful leader. So this is, uh, this is what uh, the, the whole philosophy of managing employees is with that. So you train your people, you empower your people so that the performance of the whole organization is better. Then another thing what they say is, in Sri Lanka, they, this was told to me by a consultant who has come to Sri Lanka to give advice to a factory. He said, in Sri Lanka, what happens is, you, if a person is on leave without informing, without taking leave, he is, um, without taking leave, he is absent. And he has not informed the organization Sometimes if the personal manager doesn't like him, he'll wait till the fourth day and send him vacation and post, right? And that has happened in many organizations. And some sometimes it has led to even very serious consequences. But in Japan, if a person is on, uh, absent without leave for three days, he has not informed the office, then the manager thinks differently. He thinks this poor fellow is in serious trouble. He needs help. Why hasn't he informed us? Maybe he's sick or he needs, whatever it is, he needs help. So I shall go to his house and see what is wrong with him. Now that is the difference in attitude. So same way the role of the supervisor is different in Japan and in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, this Japanese person says, supervisor is there waiting to catch somebody doing something wrong. But in Japan, the role of the supervisor is to help people, not to catch him doing so wrong and punish him, but to help, train, help and so on. So in a, in a company, that is why if you take the, uh, an employee and ask him, what are you doing, what is your profession, they will say, well, I am working for Mitsubishi, I am working for Toyota and so on. Of course, today, that lifetime employment is generally going off, but, uh, but still, uh, that loyalty is uh, still there from what I have uh, observed. In some companies, they make children also loyal to the company because even if you have forgotten, the company database says today is your daughter's birthday. And when you come for work in the morning, the personal department will say today is your daughter's birthday. Here's a gift from the company for your daughter. And then he takes it home in the evening and the daughter is thrilled. Uh, and she develops a loyalty to the company uh, even though she's a child. Other thing is the Kaizen attitude. Never be satisfied, always improve for the better, do some small improvements all the time and focus on negative things. Don't just ignore negative things, but always focus on negative things. Something bad happens, you, even if you trip on a wire or something, don't just say, well, uh, these things happen or something like that. I, this happened to me, I will make sure that this will never happen again. That sort of an attitude. And always think that everything is achievable. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is uncontrollable. That sort of an attitude. The working culture is also different. It's mostly teams rather than leaders. And they say that if you look at a festival in Japan, you won't see a leader like our Diyavadna Nilame at the Candy Perahara. Uh, you won't see a leader. Everybody is around, uh, if you are lifting some carriage or something, everybody is in a team taking, taking this. There is no leader. And that results in collective responsibility and trust and this non-specialized form where if sometimes, now even in uh, Dankutu, some of the directors, they have started 
in engineering and now they are doing marketing which what they do is they go into different roles and rise up with a broad knowledge then finally uh, if the Japanese say focus on what went wrong and why it went wrong never on who is wrong so he said don't chase after you know who did this who did this wrong thing who made this mistake who's who is responsible for this lapse and so on they said don't focus on that focus on what went wrong how did this lapse takes pl place and they have techniques like asking five why five questions why five times what what why did this happen because of this and why did that happen because of this and if you ask that why why question five times you will get to the root root cause so that that is much better than uh, asking uh, you know going after the person who made the mistake so that uh, sort of sums up uh, my uh, pre presentation there are one or two slides i want to show but because we are running out of time uh, I think I better uh, give way to some uh, questions and uh, I think I would like to start the question and answer session by looking at some some uh, questions that have been sent to me in advance and uh, now one question is even though Japanese practices were introduced to Sri Lanka three dec decades ago why didn't it sustain and develop it uh, develop as expected in many organizations yes in some organizations it hasn't succeeded but uh, by and large in there are a lot many organizations which have succeeded very well now for example the concept of quality circles which is a Japanese management technique uh, started slowly but the last convention that the Sri Lanka is Association for Advancement of Quality and Productivity had they had 120 teams and circles making presentations and the entire audience of uh, non-executive people because quality circles are for non-executive workers and this was the biggest ever conference attended by the non-executive workers because 1200 people attended this conference so you can see how it has succeeded if 120 from or from different organization 120 circles made presentation it means it has succeeded if you take 5s 5s has gone up to such a high standard that even some of the Japanese experts are surprised at the standard of 5s implemented in Sri Lanka by Justica they have the 5s competition so that has succeeded very well but in some companies it hasn't worked out now even in my consultancies I find that uh, uh, it's the, uh, the, the response is different. In some places I go and give a lecture and uh, within two weeks um, the CEO phones me and says well uh, after your lecture people have done a whole lot of things and they are requesting for you to come back and see what they have done and so I am very happy but in another organization um, uh, the CEO will phone me three months later and say well Mr. Vijay Singh you came and gave us a presentation and so on nothing happened uh, so I asked but what did you do uh, he said I did nothing I you gave a lecture I thought they will take it and do something I said that won't work it's the CEO's responsibility or somebody else's responsibility to make use of that and initiate action motivate the people and and so on so you can see I don't want to uh, mention names but some of the more progressive companies in this uh, in this country I just go and give the lecture and the others have taken it forward in a very creative creative manner so uh, so the if it has not succeeded it is some you need to uh, do some thinking yourself why didn't it it work and there is another question uh, which uh, yeah without deeply understanding and appreciating underlying Japanese thinking can we truly adapt the techniques yes that's what I said in the 
in the beginning, uh, that is, you separate what is culture specific and what is culture free. And if you take the culture free aspects, you might have to adapt it. Now, even in the case of quality circles, when we started through the quality circle uh, association of Sri Lanka, we took the Japanese concept, we made some modifications to it and implemented it here so that it has to be adapted to suit the culture in Sri Lanka and if you do that uh, it will work. It doesn't matter whether it is steeped in the Japanese culture or not, you separate that part and take the, the concept and see how that concept uh, works uh, in this country. So uh, that uh, answers those two. Any other questions? Uh, uh, let me check whether there are other questions on this. Then I will uh, uh, look at one, some more on this, uh, uh, like uh, someone has asked best practices for the IT industry. The thing is, I can't uh, give specific answers like that because um, unless I really see what uh, is entailed, I can only give the basic concepts and I leave it to you to see what you can extract and adopt to your particular industry. Because even when I learned all these uh, techniques, um, I took, took the essence of it and my mind goes to my organization how it works in how my organization work what things will work what things will not work and then i adapt it to my organization for example uh, if you take uh, the focus on customer uh, we uh, at dankutu porcelain we did it very well at the merchant bank where i was we implemented five ways quality circles and all that and it worked very well uh, we had to make certain uh, certain uh, changes because although quality circles is uh, although quality circles is like um, um, mostly for non-executive now in a place like a banking institution the the we have very few non-executive people so uh, then um, uh, yeah. Uh, the Sri Lankans are not efficient enough and um, like other cultures there is one question and there is another uh, question about mind shift in organizations because we have a Sri Lankan lazy DNA uh, of course I don't know whether to uh, uh, accept that or not about lazy DNA but only thing I can tell you is uh, that the once the same question was asked by a Japanese, uh, by a Sri Lankan manager from a Japanese expert who had come to a sister company here, and uh, uh, the manager asked, um, manager said this. He said, "It's easy for you in Japan because uh, your people are very loyal. Uh, your workers are very loyal to the company, but not like our fellows. They are not loyal to the company, and so on." And the Japanese person's answer was, well, what have you done to get that loyalty from the people? Don't expect people to be blindly loyal, but uh, see what have you done to create that uh, loyalty, to create that engagement and so on. And uh, okay, there is one person who is asking what is 5S in short. Um, well, we have actually lots of Japanese management techniques which I didn't uh, really want to uh, go into, but uh, uh, you have uh, 5S means a, a system of creating some order in your organization in five steps. So it will take me a long time to answer that in detail, but it's five steps which first says to reduce your inventory by getting uh, uh, sort of sorting and having with you only things that you need and uh, converting the other things that you don't need into cash and so on. 
then um, it actually it is focused on the productivity of capital. Then the second step is uh, make sure that your search time is reduced. And the third, third step is again uh, having a good uh, hygiene and cleanliness and uh, machine maintenance and so on so that your breakdowns and your sicknesses are less. And other thing is standardization. And fifth step is uh, uh, sustain uh, this process by various techniques. Then uh, uh, there are lots of other uh, techniques like total productive maintenance, uh, then Kaizen. We hope to do a seminar on Kaizen also very soon, which is again a very, very easily implementable technique and so on. Uh, are there any books on, the, on this? There are plenty of books uh, on the internet, uh, uh, books, videos, all manner of things. And uh, best practices from the school level, yes, actually you can visit some of the uh, uh, school uh, level things, with sco uh, good schools which have practice and which have won, won uh, award. Uh, there's another question, how do Japanese care about safety? They are very, very concerned about safety. And that's why uh, when we go to Japan very often, we get a, we get a red colored card which we have to wear on our uh, identity card or keep it in a uh, wallet which keeps all our uh, all all our uh, blood group and uh, allergies and all those things so that supposing we get caught to an earthquake or something and then we are taken to hospital hospital doesn't have to go on a voyage of discovery uh, finding out what our blood group and everything because all that is there in the red card and safety is of paramount importance uh, in most uh, Japanese organizations. I think that's uh, all we, the, the time we have, uh, right? And uh, I, I, maybe you have uh, many more questions, but this was a very short introduction. I didn't go, there are a whole lot more things. And this is also my personal observations of, uh, of Japan and Japanese practices and not merely things that I have taken from books because I have been there for 35 times. I have worked with Japanese people and these are my personal experiences. So the, the, my personal view of these and I have implemented, made use of these in many of the organizations that I have worked in and they have been extremely helpful. So. Thank you for uh, logging in and uh, uh, listening uh, listening to, to us. Uh, it has it been a great pleasure. And this is a passion of mine to explain these things. And uh, we hope to have a few more uh, seminars, but some of them will be free. Some, we, of course, we will have uh, uh, to uh, uh, charge them. So uh, I thank uh, Be Connected also, and thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, have a good evening.